Welcome to Love and Money Secrets TV and today I want to share with you how to create an electromagnetic field around your body. That's right, how to create an electromagnetic field around your body, also known as a torus field or a toroidal field. If you have followed the workings of Dr. Bruce Lipton, who some of you have listened to him on my radio show, Love and <laughs> the Bottom Line Show Live, actually, Dr. Bruce Lipton talks at great length about the electromagnetic field that your body creates and also Dr. Greg Braden. Greg Braden is also one who speaks quite a bit about the electromagnetic field and about the toroidal field. And of course, the third party is Dr. Joe Dispenza. The three of them, all scientists and physicians, metaphysicians and physicists who operate on neuroscience because they specialize in neuroscience and they call them the three amigos and they speak all over the world about this specific topic and they have applied the principles that they share with with us during that advanced training. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how to create an electromagnetic field also known as a torus field and how it's not that difficult. Everybody, so let me dispel one notion first of all. If you think for a second that you don't have an electromagnetic field already, well, that's the first mistake. Because if you are alive, you have an electromagnetic field. You have a toroidal field by the sheer fact that you're a living, breathing organism. In fact, anything that is alive, a tree, a leaf, a flower, a bush, the grass, they all have their own electromagnetic field and their own toroidal field. So you have one already, but it doesn't need to stay at the level that it's at. You can expand that field, you can fan it out, and you can extend it. You could extend it five meters that way, Five meters is a long distance. Five meters that way, five meters this way. You can go in either direction and really expand out your toroidal field. In fact, for those of you who have the ability to either see auras or feel auras, you will acknowledge that there are certain people that have a very, could be a dense electromagnetic field. It could be a very feathery, electric electromagnetic field. It could be an extensive electromagnetic field. And depending about depending on what the state of your health is and the state of your heart, and it is contingent upon your heart and your brain coherence. Your brain has a certain amount of electromagnetic frequency that it emits naturally and your heart emits a stronger, up to 5,000 times more stronger electromagnetic impulses than your brain. So once you're able to create a heart and brain coherence where your heart is filled with love and it is open and you connect it to your brain, and there's a very specific procedure that you're going to do in order to accomplish this and then to magnify and expand this. And there's, there, there are so many benefits to all the things that you can accomplish through this process, which I, I will direct you to a video that I did on how to get into theta state, because I think it's a very critical, fundamental step one video for anyone who's starting in meditation out the gate. Those people who tell you, oh, you have to be a sage or a monk, you know, you need to have meditated for 10 years, 20 years, you need to be in solitary confinement or off, you know, um, in a, you know, solitary place by yourself up in nature, up in the mountains in the Himalayas, blah, 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 blah. Not true. Not true. Not true. That's a, that is a misconception. Misconception. It's a conception that is missed. It is off base. It's not true. And the conclusive evidence and proof that I have that I have not only experienced 
in the flesh, but seen with my own two eyes, not just once, not just twice, but hundreds of times, maybe up to a thousand times or more now. I don't know, I haven't really been counting. But when I was in the monastery in Cancun, I was in Cancun for two weeks, of which seven days was extensive advanced training where we meditated 13 and a half, 14, 14 and a half hours a day from six in the morning till 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, and sometimes from 3.30 in the morning till 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. We did one meditation for four hours, four hours and 38 minutes. I never knew I could do a meditation that long. And it doesn't matter. It's not a competition to see who can do the longest meditation. What is more impressive is the number of people who were healed because we weren't meditating for the sake of meditating. We were there for the purpose to heal, heal ourselves, and more importantly, in my opinion, to heal others. There was one guy who had 50 brain tumors between his brain and his body. There was um, a guy who broke his back in three places, I believe it was three places, and I think he was in either Peru or Venezuela, one of those Latin American countries. He was skydiving. And I'll never forget the, the first four or five days of the of the monastery when we had to do, because we did meditations that were sitting meditations, standing meditations, lying down meditations, walking meditations, meditations with our eyes open. We did meditations in all the different forms and we received the instruction, then we actually did it. And then after three days of, of that intensive training throughout the entire day, we are being given all the how-tos, all the scientific conclusive evidence, of how the chemistry works, neuroendocrinology, the psycho, psycho neurology, everything you could ever possibly imagine. Brain scans, MRIs, EKGs, IgA, immunoglobulin levels, um, evidence of telomeres lengthening. I mean, it was, it was incredible. The amount of data that we were able to observe and to, to see for ourselves. And then it was even more spectacular to witness the people actually being healed. I was about to say about the skydiver. I'll never forget, um, you know, there were, there were, it's a thousand people, so it's a very large monastery. On the left-hand side, I'll never forget, there was this guy who, um, instead of being able to lay down flat, of course, his legs were kind of up in the air because he could not lay down flat. I did not know what his condition was at the time. I just because it looks strange, to be quite frank with you. So I just remember observing him, but there are plenty of people with conditions that were obvious, and many people whose conditions were not obvious. Like my condition wasn't obvious. I had, my thing was, I got hit by a bus in 2017, suffered a traumatic brain injury, neck injury, back injury, hideous scar on my leg, yada, yada, yada. And I had all sorts of other symptoms. That particular guy, you could clearly see his physical ailment where he could not lay down flat. And so when he would lay down, his legs would be up, you know, off the ground. And it looked really, really uncomfortable. And on the last day, I'll never forget, all of a sudden he was looking rather, all of a sudden, very athletic. Turns out he was kind of a tall guy. When he was walking earlier in the day, it was kind of harder to tell because he was kind of hunched over. But now he was like standing svelte, completely straight. And I think his name was Sal. I'll have to, I later saw the YouTube video, but he, we recorded it. I was there live when he did the testimony. And then of course later they sent us all the YouTube video. I'll see if I can link that into the description. But I was like, no way, that's the same guy because he's wearing the same colored shirt. And he was able to, not only was he spry and flexible, but several times while he was up on, on uh, the, the stage, he actually he goes, look, I can do this now. And then he laid down and he was perfectly flat. So expanding, working on these meditative practices, doing the guided meditations, doing your own meditations. This is possible. Whether you've never meditated or have any notion of how to even begin or start, 
or whether you've done it for years, doesn't matter. The bottom line is now you, of, of all the myriad of information that is available on the planet, in the galaxy, and on the internet, it's finally been brought into a fine point in time where you and I are intersecting. Make no mistakes, this is not some sort of happenstance. I call this a God incidence. You've been asking for answers to your prayers, to your supplications, to your pleas. You've been thinking there's got to be a better way. I've got to figure this out. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. This is the answer. This is how you create this electromagnetic field, this toroidal field, how you really solidify it and magnify it. Okay? So I'm very excited that we've met at this moment in time. This could be the difference really between life and death for you. Make no mistakes, it really can be. So thank you for tuning in, tapping in, turning on. The specifics about how to create the electromagnetic field, like I said, I wanna be clear because sometimes people watch videos and they're like, well, I didn't get it. How do you actually do it? The, it I told you it's through the meditation. If you watch the video, how to get into the theta state, I talk specifically about how you have to, first thing, you have to slow down your breath. You have to, on purpose, intend to slow down your breath, and you're going to take slow, deep inhalations and exhalations. You're going to inhale, hold, and exhale. With your mind, you're gonna take your attention, like laser-like focus, you're gonna to go to your first energy center. First, to the second, to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth, to the sixth, to the seventh, and then to the eighth. And then you're gonna bring it down. There's a process to this. I go, I explain it in detail in the video, how to get into theta state. This is how you're gonna create induction. This is how you're going to create an electromagnetic field. Bear in mind that normally, without you doing anything, your cerebral spinal fluid that's inside your spinal column rotates, it cycles through twice in a 24 hour period. When you meditate and you do the appropriate deep breathing, this is a type of deep breathing that creates induction. You, induction is required in order for you to manifest and to affect your pineal gland, for you to create heart coherence and brain coherence. Everything has been methodically thought out and put together so that you have the highest fastest results possible. The only variable here is you. You have to choose to do it. So as you do that, the cerebral, the cerebrospinal fluid is going to start to, with your inhalation, it, because you're taking your attention with your mind to your first energy center and you're bringing it up as you inhale, that is going to speed up the rate at which your cerebral spinal fluid is now cycling through your body. Because now with each inhalation it goes up, the vessels, not the vessels, the sinuses in your head, if you actually look at um, x-rays of people as they're doing the breath, you'll see that your, you know, you have a, a fissure here at the top of your brain. It actually opens and closes, opens and closes. As you inhale and as you exhale, it closes again. That is like a pump. You're taking that attention with the breath and then you're bringing in the muscles from the first to the second to the third energy center. The muscles that you use to expel waste, to use to make love to another individual. You're gonna use them now in reverse on purpose, mechanistically to push up that cerebral spinal fluid. As you do that over and over and over again, your cerebral spinal fluid has proteins, fluids, um, electrolytes. It has, it has an electrical charge. As you speed it up, the electrical charge starts to get stronger and it starts to hit your pineal gland. That, that will ignite a chemical reaction called the piezoelectric effect. That piezoelectric effect will spark. You actually feel, at least I can speak for myself, where all of a sudden you feel like an electric shock. I've had 
many meditations where I have it once. I've had it happen on what I felt was like both sides where I felt it once, boom, really loud on one side. And then it seems to not be as loud on the other side. I don't know. There isn't any rhyme or reason. It does not happen to me every time I medita meditate. I don't know what determines my having it one time and not the other, but it's happened so many times now. I even had it um, happen several times where it made me sit up because it was such a big pow. You hear a big loud snap and it's like an electrical jolt. It doesn't hurt, but it is. it catches your attention without a shadow of a doubt. That chemical reaction and that piezoelectric effect, which is a spark that hits your pineal gland, there are five crystals, uh, calcium carbonate crystals. They're stacked one on top of each other. They're on your pineal gland. Your pineal gland is the size of a rice grain. When those, as you're doing the breath and you're focusing and you're doing the induction, this is what creates induction, they start to shimmer. As they start to shimmer, it starts to warm up the electric effect and they start to elongate. And when you have the piezoelectric effect that shoots off, and now you have that electrical jolt, it starts to grow at the top of your pineal gland a little antenna, which is called a transducer, which is what helps you reach not only higher states of consciousness, it also helps you perceive and see and detect things that otherwise are unperceivable. Okay? The, the, your body will create benzodiazepine, it will create dimethyltryptophan, it'll create vasopressin, oxytocin, melatonin. We're not going to get into all the specifics as to each, what each and every one of those do, but if you want more information on that, get it straight from the horse's mouth. Just do a video uh, in the how to get into theta state. In the description, I have videos on Dr. Joe that you can watch. They're all nicely packaged and organized there. There's half a dozen of them. You can just watch those and you'll get the nitty gritty from him, okay? The bottom line is that now as you do this, now you have an electrical, electromagnetic field that is really complete and it's really expanded. And that energy can be directed for all sorts of things. That's the exciting news. You're already doing it. Now you're going to direct it and to use it with intention, with purpose, with laser-like focus. Okay? So that's how you create an electromagnetic field. Thank you for tuning in, tapping in, turning on to Love and Money Secrets TV. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification button so that you are informed every time I upload a new video. That's it. Ciao for now from Rome, Italy. Bye-bye.